Mighty God and sovereign creator, this morning we pray that your grace will be sufficient for us. Amen. Do for me that which I can't do for myself. When we come to the end of this sharing, may glory and honor be to you and you alone. Because we ask and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to share my screen now. And um, for this morning, we are looking at uh, the importance of history. The importance of history. It's very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters, that we understand and know history very well, especially our own history, the importance of history. As we look at the subject of today, we see that today, the world and we who live in it, have a crisis and the crisis we have today is that of identity. Who are we? And because of this crisis of identity, a lot of things happen. They change names, they change their skin complexion, they change their intonation, they change their food, and they change their dressing all because of an identity crisis. It is Bob Marley and the Wailers. One of their songs, and please, the law says, Thou shalt not ask the pastor how he came to know the song. But Bob Marley and the Wailers, they sang a song, Buffalo Soldier. I like the relics. And if we were meeting physically, we would have harmed it together. But in that song, Buffalo Soldier, speaking about the people who came from Africa going to the Americas, that they were fighting on arrival, fighting for survival, stolen from Africa and taken to the Caribbeans and to the Americans. And as he goes on singing the song, he comes to where uh, in the song he says, if you know your history, you know where you are coming from. And it is as if you could hear Ellen White in Life Sketches, page 196, where she says, we have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us in our past history. And so my brothers and sisters, it's very important that we know our history very well. There are two schools of thought today concerning the origin of humanity. One school says we came through the processes of evolution. And another school says, no, we were created by God. According to the school of uh, evolution, as you can see on the screen, we started as uh, the primates and we continued to develop until we are where we are, modern homo sapiens, that is you and I. And this is how we progress, working on four until we now walk on two. But there is a story that I heard some years back when debate was very much in fashion. There was a night that was organized somewhere where people believed in evolution and those who believed in creation came together and the crowd was gathered this one, uh, this one morning. And one who was a proponent of evolution began to address the congregation. And by the time he finished speaking, he was given a standing ovation and everyone was happy because it seems he had nailed it. And then when the creationist came, he began by greeting the audience. And in the greeting, he said, good morning monkeys and baboons gathered here this morning. 
And when he said those words, there were murmurings in the audience. And one of them got the courage and said, how dare you address us as monkeys and baboons? And then this debater said, I thought you agreed with the former speaker because at the end of his preaching, you gave him a standing ovation, meaning that you agreed that we are cousins to the monkeys and the baboons and the chimpanzees of the Ituri forest. But now that you say, that I am mistaken by addressing you as monkeys and baboons. Now, I can no longer even waste my time uh, speaking in defense of creation because already you have said no to the theory of evolution. So we see that even those who believe uh, in evolution may not want to be identified with the monkeys and the baboons and the chimpanzees of the Turi forest. The other school of thought, as we said, is of creation. According to the Bible, my dear brothers and sisters, that good old book says, then God said in Genesis 1 verse 26, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so according to this theory, my dear brothers and sisters, we did not evolve, but we came into existence by an intelligent designer. That is God. We came because God in his own wisdom wanted to make that create man in his own image. We were created in the image of God. And so my brothers and sisters, let them say whatever they want to say. But the good old book says, God created us in his own image. And so in the image of God, we were all created. And because we were created by God, my dear brothers and sisters, there are three things that I want to share with you this morning. Because of creation, we know who we are. Because of creation, we know who we are. You remember the story of Simba, the Lion King, the field that was there between Mufasa and the father, the father of uh, Simba, who is Mufasa, the brother of, of Mufasa was Scar. And Scar wanted to rule the, the kingdom. But he, there was an obstacle on the way, and that was Mufasa. And so he orchestrated things until Mufasa was killed. And once Mufasa was killed, uh, this Scar, the brother to Mufasa, wanted also to eliminate this uh, prince, uh, Simba. And you know the story that finally is in the scheme of things. He had Simba exiled far away. But there where he went, he went there where some friends. One of those friends was um, Rafiki, uh, as you can see him in that picture. And when Simba had grown, he met uh, Rafiki. And Rafiki, when he met Simba said, hey, you are Mufasa's boy. And Simba said, oh, so you know my father? Are you my father? And then Rafiki said, correction, I'm not your father. You have forgotten who you are. You are Mufasa's boy. And immediately Simba realized that he was Mufasa's boy. He was destined to be the king. He left the place where he was because he knew who he was. My dear brothers and sisters, because of creation, we know who we are. We are not cousins to the chimpanzees of the Turi forest, the monkeys and the baboons, because we are children of God. We may look different, but we were created in the image of God. 
We may be poor, but we are special in the eyes of God. Our worthy, my dear brothers and sisters, does not lie in our looks. Our worthy does not lie in our heights. Our worthy does not lie in our skin complexion. Our worthy does not lie in our achievements. Our worthy does not lie in our status, but in how we came into existence. We came from the hand of God. And so we are worthy because we were created in the image of God. We know who we are because Genesis 1 verse 26 says, let us make man in our own image that he may have dominion over everything. And thus, my brothers and sisters, we know who we are. We are God's stewards. We are stewards of time. We are stewards of talents. We are stewards of our bodies, we are stewards of the resources that God has committed to us. And so we know who we are because of creation. My dear brothers and sisters, again, the second point is, we know we are one. We are one on this planet because according to Acts 17 verse 26, the Bible says from one person, God made all nations who live on earth. And he decided when and where every nation should be. This is according to contemporary English version. My dear brothers and sisters, there may be many races on planet earth, but we know we are one. We may come from different continents, but we know we are one. We may come from different countries, but we know we are one. Even here in Zambia, we may come from different provinces, but we know we are one. We may speak different languages, but we know we are one. Our skin pigment may be different from one person to the other, and yet we know we are one. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord, and so a church of God, and so students and of Rusangu University, and so the faculty of Rusangu University, let us create this oneness because we have one common denominator, God, and we have one common denominator, Adam and Eve. And because of creation, we know we are one. Third point that I want to share with you this morning is that because of creation, we have a sure destiny. We have a sure destiny. Yes, brothers and sisters, we have a sure destiny. According to John 14, verses 1 to 3, Jesus said to his disciples, don't be worried. Again, I'm using the contemporary English version. Don't be worried. Have faith in God and have faith in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. Thank God. I will not tell you this unless it was true. Yes, God. I am going there to prepare a place for each of you, after I have done this, I will come back and take you with me. Then we will be together. Oh yes, my dear brothers and sisters. It is now almost over 2000 years since Jesus said these words, but I know one day soon we shall be together. I know one day soon face to face with Christ, my savior. Oh, how will it be? We have a sure destiny. Just like we have a sure uh, beginning, we also have a sure destiny. Just like we began uh, by being created by God, we were with God when, we, when he created us. We shall also live with him very soon. Our destination, my dear brothers and sisters, is not in one of these countries here on earth, no. Our destiny is not in one of the cities here on planet earth. Our destiny is not Lusaka. Our destiny is not Johannesburg. Our destiny is not Tokyo. Our destiny is not London. Our destiny is not Washington DC. Our destiny is where Jesus is. Because the Bible says, is the Bible, the Bible says in Hebrews, 11, where the Bible says that for they were looking for a city, which has foundation, 
For they were looking for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. My dear brothers and sisters, we are looking for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God, where God will dwell with us so that we are together finally. Brothers and sisters, I like the highlighted part there. I am going there to prepare a place for each of you. A story is told of a group of workers who went on a trip. And if they went on this trip, each one contributed that which they were able to contribute. Those who had means of transport, they volunteered their cars. Others who had money, they volunteered money for fuel. And those others said, we are going to prepare food. And when finally the day came for traveling, one of the people volunteered a car was not able to travel. Finally, when they met at their workplace after the trip was taken, one of those who had prepared food said to this person who missed the trip that I was very disappointed that you did not travel with us. And then the person asked the question, why? And the answer came, because as I was preparing food, I had you in mind. I had you in mind. I put all my energy into what I was doing because I had you in mind. My dear brothers and sisters, as Jesus is preparing mansions for us, remember child of God, remember daughter of God, remember son of God, that he has you in mind. And so don't miss because you will disappoint your maker. You will disappoint your redeemer because he has you in mind. He knows your taste of beauty. And so everything he is doing, he is doing it because he has you in mind. And therefore, never miss your destiny. God bless you. The importance of history.